Welcome to Excel Business Math Series number five. Here is the file we're working with. If you want to go to YouTube, my uh, Excel is fun channel, there's the address right there, and then you scroll down. There's the college website link. And at the very bottom, control N, there's the business math series. If you're enrolled in the class, you just go to our, our, our website and download the file there. In this uh, video, we got to talk about functions. Functions are a type of formula. Now, earlier we talked about the basics of formula. Let's just remind ourselves here. You got to put an equal sign, and then we're going to use cell references. So we'll have two, and then asterisks on the number pad for multiplication and two. That is a formula by definition because there's an equal sign as the first character in the cell. And then we have cell references and operators. In this video, we want to see how to use built-in functions, which will make our calculations much easier. Now let's do a formula here for adding equals this plus this plus this plus this plus this. Now, you never want to do this. This takes too long and it's not as efficient as the sum function which we'll see in just a moment. I'm actually going to control enter and put that there. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to use a function. I'm going to start off with equals and then type SUM. That SUM is a built-in function. In 2007, there's a drop-down, so you get to see all the types of sum function. You can just double-click, and it'll put the parentheses in. In earlier versions, you don't have that drop-down, so you have to type sum and then open parentheses. Then you simply take your cursor and click in the first cell and hold it and then drag. So now we got the range A2 to A6, close parentheses. Here's why you don't want to do that, because lots of times when you have budget tables or payroll tables, you add a new line for an expense or you add a new employee, and here's what happens. Right click this uh, six over here, right click insert, and if I come right here and type 10, before I hit enter, watch this formula and watch this formula. This sum function, if I hit F2 here, puts it in edit mode, you'll see that it updated when I inserted row and added 10. But if I click here and hit F2, no way. It didn't update. Don't do this when it comes to a test, because it'll be wrong. Efficiency is what we're after. We want to uh, be able to do our math calculations most efficiently. Now, um, we could do um, a formula over here. Again, this is a formula equals multiply, it'll take 8 minus 5 times 4, and that'll be our formula here. I just made that up. That is a formula. So 8 times 5 uh, will be 3 times 4 will be 12, right? No, no, no. Order of operations says it'll be 5 times 4, which is 20, and then 8 minus 20 is minus 12, minus 12. Let's go back to talking about functions. I would like to average. I want to add all these up and then divide by the count. That's how you take an average or calculate what the typical value is. Luckily, there's a built-in function. Equals average. I'm going to click Escape a bunch of time. I'm going to show you a different way, because a lot of times you don't know the name of the function and you want to be able to go search. So I'll click on that cell, and I'll click on my F of X button right there. And sure enough, search for a function. We could type average. You could also type mean. In statistics, it's called a mean. But either one of those, you click go. Oh, look, mean didn't get it. Oh, poor little Excel. Uh, you could read this confidence, returns the confidence interval for a population mean. No, that's not what we want. Z test, returns the one-tailed P test for, no, that's all statistics. Boy, if you typed in mean, there's average if, but that's not what we want. The um, Advantage to this is, even if you can't, aren't a good uh, guesser at what to type in to search for, you could click on each one of these, and sure enough, one of them, average, it says returns the average arithmetic mean of its arguments, which is what we want. So then we could click OK. But we could be smarter in the way we search average. And sure enough, it's the first one come up. But be sure and read this, because you could figure out um, there's functions for almost anything you'd ever want to do. I'm going to click then OK. This is the functions argument dialog box. 
and it's wanting the number, so I'm simply going to click. Notice this little red arrow, that means it can co collapse. Anytime you see that in a text box, that means you can get your cells and enter them into the function or whatever, chart or whatever. I'm going to click and drag, and then click OK. So the average is 3. And if we change this to uh, 20 right here, then they, uh, it updates. Hey, this one, this one didn't update. Uh, that one's still not working. That's OK. We'll leave it there. Uh, product. Here's another one. What does product mean? In math, it means multiply. So let's cl click up here. Let's type multiply and then Enter. D product multiplies the values in a field column of records in a database. Well, we don't have a database. Click on the next one. Multiplies all the number in a give in a numbers given as arguments. Arguments is a math term that means uh, variables entered into a formula or in our case uh, a, f a function. That's what they call um, all the things you put into a function. I'm going to click here and click OK. That's an argument. That's an argument. Why do they have so many? Well, for us, it doesn't matter because the values we want to multiply are right here. However, what's so nice about this is if you did have some numbers right here and then you clicked over here and you had numbers like right there, so now we are free to get values from anywhere in our spreadsheet all over the place. We're going to multiply all those together. And there we can, you could see a, um, this tells you the input right from that range. This tells you the input from that range. This gives you uh, the formula result as does this. I'm going to click OK. Product. That was a lot easier than going this cell times this cell times this cell times this cell. Now a couple other functions that we're going to use in this class because this is a math class. Um, and these functions, LCM and quotient, lowest common multiple and quotient, which means divide or the answer from division. These two functions, if you don't have 2007, I have 2007, so they're automatically here. But if you do not, in earlier versions, 2003 and earlier, you have to actually add these in. So you go to the Tools menu and then click on Add Ins and then add in the Analysis Tool Pack. And that will add in the LCM and Quotient. If you're in the class, there's a handout at our website that shows you how to do that. Let's go ahead and do LCM. We'll have to do this is least common denominator. We're going to have to do this when we do fractions. We'll talk about that in chapter 2, fractions. Here we just want to see how the function works. Equals LCM. By the way, this is a lot easier than having to uh, uh, do it by, by long, the long way by hand. However, if you know how to do it the long way, which we'll do in chapter 2, you get the meaning of it. And it's quite beautiful, actually. I'm going to hit Enter, and sure enough, the LCM is 12. Don't forget that function, LCM, has to be added in in earlier versions. All right, let's uh, look at uh, the quotient. Quotient, we're going to take 12 divided by 8. The quotient gives us just the integer part. So 12 divided by 8 is 1.3 uh, or something. Uh, so equals 12 divided by 8, right? Uh, 1.5. Oh, yeah, 4, 4, there's two 4s there and three 4s there. Uh, but what if you actually want just the integer part, just that um, number before the decimal point? So you want everything to the left of the decimal point. Well, that's where the quotient function comes in. And you simply highlight the, the number or <coughs> the, the numerator. That's the top of the fraction, comma, and the denominator is the bottom. And it gives you 1. Similarly, there's something called the mod function, which gives, you, which gives you the remainder. So equals mod. And it's funny here, they don't use the same terminology. I, 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 they should fix that. Number is going to be the top of the fraction, comma, divisor is going to be the bottom. And the mod function will give us the remainder. Now, we'll talk about those more later, but those functions have to be added in. Mod is in earlier versions. So that's a little bit about functions and uh, as you can start to see here with things like sum and average and product and even LCM and uh, quotient and mod, they can do some heavy lifting because some of these things uh, by hand uh, can really take a long time. You got to do them by hand to, to learn them or at least the first or second time. But after that, if you're doing them in your job, forget it. Use the fast way. All right, we'll see you next trick.